what's up everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChittyCheckIt.com here with yet another amazing tutorial Tuesday. Today we're going to go over a sort of retro text effect. And as you can see, we just got a simple little font going on here, but we are able to stretch and connect it to make it look pretty interesting, get some brush strokes up in there, and just add a little bit of text here at the bottom on this graph paper just for a little, little extra flair. And, of course, don't forget the grungy texture that we've got going on. And before we get into anything, I just kind of want to mention that I'm sick and kind of running off of like five hours of sleep or something like that. So if I sound a little groggy, that's why. So just a little heads up with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. I'm going to let you know right now you're going to have to download a certain font to get it to work. But I will give you a link down in the description. And so we're just going to go with a 1280 by 720 new document here with a transparent background, seeing as we're going to be filling it up with a new color anyway. So I'm going to name our original layer here BG. And down here, you're going to want to make sure that your foreground or background color is set to this brown color with a number of 322114. And it's just that dark, murky kind of brownish color that we're going to be using. So we're going to go ahead and fill up this layer with that color by hitting Alt Backspace or Option Delete if you're on a Mac computer. And we're just going to swap over to our text tool with the letter T and swap it to white by hitting X. So that way we're going to be writing some white text. And the name of this font is called Devil Breeze. I'm using the Demi version of it. And I'm going to size this up to about 150 point font. Make sure it's set to sharp and we should be set to go. So we're just going to type in check it with the capital C and a capital I and use our move tool to just uh, sort of position it somewhere up in the top left hand corner there. And we're going to go over to the check it text layer over here and give that a right click. And we're just going to convert it to a shape right there. And now that this text layer is a shape, we should be able to manipulate it as we please. And so what you're going to want to do is kind of get an idea of how you want to manipulate whatever text you decided to type. If it wasn't check it, then you're going to have to kind of come up with that on your own. But what I decided to do was to make the K and the T connect. And the way that I went ahead and did that was to go over here to the direct selection tool. And I just kind of zoom in on the K a little bit and make a little selection down here on the bottom just so we can get a uh, selection going on these two anchor points. And with those two anchor points selected, we're just going to click and drag while holding the shift key. That way we can uh, move them over with a nice 45 degree angle. And that way we can get this stretched K right there. And so we're just going to do the same thing with the T right here. Just make a selection on the bottom so we can get these two anchor points. And then click them down while holding the shift key. That way we can make sure that they go down properly just make sure they're fit within the letter K right there and then we're just going to do the same thing with the H over here just so we have a kind of bounding box sort of going for the graph that we're going to be making so we'll just make a selection around those two anchor points bring them on down and we'll call that good so now that we've got the H, the K, and the T kind of lengthened a little bit, we'll go ahead and right click the layer over here and we will click rasterize layer so that it converts it into pixels rather than vectors. So with that rasterized and still selected as a layer, we'll go ahead and go over here to the rectangular marque tool. And we're just going to zoom in on the C and see what's going on here. And I can see that we've got some pure white pixels going on up here. So that way I know that when I make this little selection I can actually go up there and we're just gonna make a little box just kinda right there and if you look right here these are kinda faded so we don't want to have that selected but since we have some pure white pixels up here it's okay to have that in our selection and we'll just go ahead and fill that in with white again with the alt backspace shortcut because we have white as our foreground color and so we'll just deselect that with control D or command D if you're on a Mac computer and we're just going to do something kind of similar for the letter E here. We're going to make a little selection on this side of the E going upwards. And make sure you have this left side all selected. But leave out the bottom right here because it's a faded white rather than pure white. 
and again we'll just go ahead and fill that in with alt backspace and that should get that little effect right there and so the next thing we need to take care of is make sure that we have an area that kind of limits the graph that we're going to be making if you take a look at this if we were to make a graph in this area it would kind of leak up into the E area and kind of up into the the C because there is no limit you know to to where we'd be uh, putting it so all we're gonna do is just make a selection right around here all the way over here to the inner part of the K so we're stopping right at this edge of the the inner part of the K we're starting right here on the inner part of the H we're just making sure that we're getting all of this uh, bottom section of the E and that just kind of includes the C as you're doing all that and so when you fill that in and deselect it now you can see that we kind of have a limited area of where we're going to be making the graph and that just gives it a little more continuity and it makes it look a little bit more interesting all together so it just kind of works out in the end okay so now that we're done filling in random sections with white we're going to want to zoom in on the letter I right here and just make a selection around it and we're going to duplicate it into its own layer by hitting Control shift j or command shift j for those on a Mac computer and so that'll be on its own layer now and I'm just going to rename that I seeing as it's just the letter I there and we're going to give this a color overlay and the color that we're going to be using is a sort of orangish gold sort of color and the number for that is F C 9 E 1 D and hit OK and hit OK again and then you'll get that nice orangey goldish sort of color there and so now I believe we are ready to get started on our graph and we're gonna need a little bit of help with this to make it a little easier so we'll just bring up our ruler by hitting control R or command R for Mac users and so we'll zoom in on the H right here and we're just gonna make a box right about there so that it kind of hugs the bottom of the H and the inner parts of the sides of the H and we'll just click and drag from this ruler right here and it'll snap to the edge of our selection making it a lot easier to, to position these rulers and so we'll put in those three rulers right there and we'll pan over here to the CK and we'll make a box about right there that way we're able to put a ruler on the bottom of this little segment and another ruler on the side of the K right there. So we'll go ahead and deselect that. We'll zoom back out and then we're going to put two more rulers down here at the bottom of the, the K. Just zoom in a lot so you start seeing like weird pixels and stuff. And just make a selection, doesn't matter how big it is, as long as you have this little grayish pixel selected and just go ahead and make a ruler right there on the right side of that pixel and put another ruler at the bottom okay so these rulers that we just made are gonna help a lot with just making a selection for the graph so what we're gonna do is go ahead and use our polygonal lasso tool and start a selection down here in the bottom right hand corner and we're gonna work our way up until this snaps to this ruler right here and just kind of move on down until it matches up with the angle of that K and then we're just gonna continue along the bottom of the HEC and just kinda of go down to the bottom and and that way you should have a very close to perfect selection around this area that we're gonna be using here so with that selected we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer and call it graph and we're gonna fill it in with white again with alt backspace and we're gonna give this guy a color overlay and the color that we're gonna be using is a sort of murky green sort of color I don't know how to explain it anyway the uh, number for that is 6F7A38 so once you've got that in go ahead and hit OK and then we'll just swap over to a pattern overlay over here and click the little drop down arrow next to this pattern make sure that you're in the colored paper section and when the little pop up comes up just hit OK it doesn't really matter and we're gonna use this texture over here it's called graph paper it's on the second row to the far right and you can mess with the scale if you want but I'm just gonna leave that all as is and we're gonna change the blend mode to multiply 
Did I change? Nope. Uh, go back to your color overlay and make sure the blend mode on that green is set to multiply. That way it all kind of blends through and that way it looks nice. So with those two layer styles, we'll just go ahead and hit OK. We'll close this up just for the sake of not having a lot of little menus and stuff. And the next thing we're going to take care of is adding in a couple of brush strokes just to kind of enhance the feeling. So I'm going to hit Control H and Control R just so we can hide up those rulers and all that. And we're going to make a new layer. It doesn't have to be called anything, but we're going to have to put it into a group by hitting Control G and we'll just call that group brushes. And with the brushes group selected, we're going to control click the thumbnail for the graph layer and that's just going to load it up as a selection over there on the left hand side. And then we're going to go down here to the add a layer mask icon and click that while holding the alt key or the option key if you're on a Mac and that will create an inverted mask on that group right there. So that way we're going to see everything outside of the graph paper rather than you know everything if that makes sense so we're gonna go ahead and swap to our brush tool with the letter B and you're gonna wanna load up some sort of paintbrush set of some sort I do have an ultimate paint set that's just a crap load of paintbrushes and such that you can download from our website I'll go ahead and throw in a link in the description for you so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the second row and this little guy right here as the brushes we're gonna use because they're kind of uh... If, just throwing there one of the brushes for an example they're not completely solid they're a little bit see-through and it just kind of goes with the the feel of the effect so with that brush stroke we're just gonna bring up the transform tool with control T and we'll just kind of throw it somewhere maybe yeah, maybe we'll just kind of put it over here and so basically you're just gonna go ahead and make a bunch of different layers throw on some random brush stroke of some sort bring up the transform tool and just kind of put it wherever the freak you want just uh, as long as it looks alright and you think it uh, matches up with the rest of the image Alright, once you're done putting in brush strokes, you can uh, go ahead and close this brushes group right here. And uh, the last thing we're going to do to add to this is just kind of throw in some sort of random texture of some sort. I've got this image that I used from Video Copilot's Riot Gear DVD. No, I can't give this to you. Sorry, I kind of bought it. I don't really have the permission to use it, or not use it. Um, I'm not allowed to give it away. So just go on to Google, type in grunge texture or paper texture of something or something like that. Go ahead and desaturate it when you get it in here. And we'll just set the uh, blend mode here to multiply. And I'll just kind of tone down the opacity so it's not quite so intense. And that's looking pretty good right there. So let's go ahead and push the tab key and control zero to zoom in to canvas size to see how it's looking. And I'd say it looks pretty good to say the least and so with that we are actually finished with this retro text effect alright so I think that went pretty well I hope you were able to get something cool looking yourself I know this is looking pretty good for me if you liked this video or learned something new please like this video and subscribe that always helps us it's good to know that you guys like our videos and all that it gives us a little bit of a morale boost and it lets other people know that we actually have good tutorials and you know the more people watch and the better right you know more people learn in Photoshop so if you have any requests for a tutorial that you would like me to do please go to our Facebook fan page I'll definitely put up a link in the description so go to our fan page and go to the discussion board there is a section there for you to leave requests and the like and if you'd like me to create a tutorial that you came up with yourself, there is a section for that too. Just go to our Facebook fan page and you should be set to go. So thank you for watching guys. I will see you next Tuesday.